previously on the Adventure Zone. Abraka, fuck you! <laughs> and I, I cast magic missile at him. I'm going to die now. <laughs> and you don't see Jenkins anymore. He is gone. He has been deposited out of the back of the train. You hear him go, smell you later. <laughs> and it is Marvy, the only surviving member of the Hammerhead gang. You bring the axe down on him. Uh, he spins a full 360 degrees. And is he, he dead? And then he falls to the ground dead. Uh, through that window, you can see what appears to be a pretty large glass uh, cylindrical fuse, uh, which illuminates whenever this thing talks. My, my name is Noel. I what? might have just figured out what those fuses are for. You see three shapes appear. Uh, one is sort of uh, massive, massively built, kind of gorilla-like. Uh, another is uh, much more slender um, with a what looks like a cannon for an arm. And another one is very short uh, and has what appears to be like a bunch of wires sticking out of it. Oh my god, I can't believe it's you guys. <laughs> Oh, yes, this is going to be a lovely little rematch, isn't it? That's right, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's time for round two. Can our heroes claim victory once again against their old nemeses? I don't know, I haven't listened yet. Don't spoil it for me. It's the Adventure Zone. <laughs> I think we should kick things off with a little bit of initiative. I think we oh, should, I think we should yeah. take initiative in this this new podcast episode we're recording. I'm excited. This is my first time rolling my new dice. Oh, what are they? Whalebone? No, I got a beautiful translucent green emerald kind of thing. What if they got stank on you, them? You got that elephant dick bone <laughs> carved. I and I rolled a 15. A good start. Good work, dice. I rolled a 15. But I roll another one. That's 17 total for me. Oh, right. Uh, I rolled a 15 plus nothing. It's a 12 for your boy. Hmm? 12 for your boy. Your boy gets 12. I just wrote 12. That's not your name. Your name's Taco. Yeah. Who? All right. Okay. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Well, I roll four different initiatives. Good, um, good. I think they could just round up in the rules, the official rules. I think you can just round average them, right? Yeah, sure. Why not? So first in the order, uh, well, bef before we do anything, um, these robots are just kind of cackling maniacally at you. Mm -hmm. I uh, cackle right back. A backle. Okay. <laughs> now, you're a, now you're having a cackle battle. A cack off. The, the one with a cannon for an arm says, uh, I've got to say, I... I'm so psyched for this rematch. I have been looking forward to this for, well, since I was vanquished. And I got to say, I'm so glad to be here with you two bros. Um, uh, my, my two main men, Jenkins and Marvy. I'm just so psyched to, um, to have this opportunity to whoop some, to whoop, to whoop the Rudy Poo asses with you. So um, uh, let's just have a good clean fight. And uh, may the best robot win, I suppose. Magic B? Yes. Break. Are, are you are you a ghost in the machine? Uh, it would seem that way. You kicked me very uh -huh. good. Yeah, I remember this, the following. I cast a magic missile at you, Taco, uh -huh. and then you cast one back at me, and our friendship, our budding friendship was betrayed. I thought that we might have a good thing going, and I... He, he reaches, well, he can't reach into his pocket. If I was still living, I would have reached into my pocket and shown you. I had, I was, I had a wedding invitation for you to come to my marriage ceremony. Ooh, and awkward. And I, instead of RSVPing to it, you murdered me. <laughs> What's death like? It's pretty chill. You go over there and you're like, you just kind of float around in a big pool made up of like 
the sort of collected memories of everyone who's ever lived. It's like, it's pretty chill, actually, but I prefer living, and, uh, you know, I was so close to getting my hands on that, that sweet, sweet Phoenix Fire Gauntlet. So, um, you know, daddy's got to get his. I mean, you guys could just go away now. You got these new robot bodies. We don't See, have to fight and kill you again. As good as that sounds, I would love to get back to my usual sort of M.O., my daily routine. I, I have a beautiful garden that I need to go back and tend to. I have some Ooh. some begonias that... Uh, oh, no. What's wrong? Uh, Nothing. Your garden is great. How would you know how my... Oh, have you been tending to it since you murdered yep, me? It seems like totally. the least you could do after getting my ass thrown off the back of a moving train is see to my plants and my begonias and my fruits and my lilies. Yep. They're all fine. Are we fighting or what? Jenkins says, uh, oh, yeah, we can, let's move on to that. Because I'm we, actually. I feel like, listen, I'm not, I'm not here to dictate the narrative, but I feel like we've really explored your uh, individual arcs <laughs> pretty thoroughly. I'd like to get to the part where I shoot you in the chest with it as an arrow. It's too <laughs> bad that you're going last in the initiative order then. Uh, Jenkins actually goes first. He beat a 17. Yeah, Jenkins went ass. Uh, uh, Jenkins, uh, is this little robot, uh, kind of spherical that it, it kind of looks like a fry guy a little bit, except he has all of these, like, individually moving, waving wires. Um, and then his, like, fuse is sort of embedded in the middle of it, and you can see it behind a little circular window. Um, and, uh, his, his fuse starts to glow really brightly, and some sparks start to shoot off of... Uh, all those different wires that are poking out of his spherical body, and this uh, this weird wave and kind of like a, a supersonic sound comes out of him. And uh, I'm going to need all of you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh, Griffin, real quick before I do that, with the shield of mis- uh, memories, yeah, does this count as robots, which I yeah, have told this the would, shield this about before? Ro- yeah, this okay. would count as robots. Okay. Uh, three for me. Oh my Jesus, Justin! Yeah, not good. Uh, uh, twenty-three for me. A twelve okay. for me. Holy shit! Okay, twelve uh, is good. The it's good news abo- is it's in the top fifty percent. Yeah, the good news is that Merle and Carrie uh, cleared their saving rolls. Um, this spell didn't seem to have any effect on Noel at all. Uh, the bad news is that. Uh, Taco and Magnus, uh, you have been confused. Well, what else is new? This is a fun spell, and we're going to resolve it uh, when we get to your turns. Um, In fact, let's go ahead and get to the resolution right now, because Magnus, you're up next. Uh, Before you do anything, my friend, uh, I need you to roll 1d10. That's a 10. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, You can act and move normally. Yeah! What was the deal? What was I trying to do? Um, well, let's not ruin it. Let's not okay. ruin the surprise. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to charge the gorilla one. Okay. And I'm going to try to axe into that panel in the front with the fuse in it. Okay. So, yeah, I guess I'll just, like, two-handed rail splitter that shit. Okay. That is not good. That was a critical miss. Yeah. Uh, um, you, you bring your axe down. You sort of do a horizontal hard chop. Uh, and that glass is made of way, 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 way sturdier stuff than you thought. Uh, it's basically like uh, the shit that they put in those big tanks and aquariums. Um, and you don't even you don't even leave a scuff mark on that shit. Okay, well, time to try again with my second attack. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot better. That's a nineteen plus seven twenty six. That's a mit. No, I'm just kidding. That's a hit. Uh, a yeah, bitch. go ahead and roll damage. Um, I'm also going to use goading attack. When attack lands, uh, dice plus damage equals wisdom saving throw. On fail, target has disadvantage on attack, not against you. Okay. Uh, uh, well, yeah, so, I'll do the damage first. Yeah, roll so, that first. 1d10 plus 6. That's another 10. So 16 damage. Okay. Um, and then... It would have to be a 22 wisdom saving throw. Well, that's that simply won't happen. He's, a, I mean, Marvy was not a smart man to begin with, and now he's inhabiting a giant gorilla robot body. Uh, yeah, no. 
I, okay. I do not. So take. 16 damage, um, and then a disadvantage on any attack, not against me. Okay, I'm going to actually demand that you say something to goad him while you hit him. Hey, do you remember how easy it was to kill you the first time? I plan on doing that again. Yeah, you And we threw me. your body off a cliff. Off a what? cliff. Your loved ones will never find it. They no, probably that, have no idea on. you're even dead. Hold the phone. Because right now, what you just said, that was racist. Because I know me and Barbara sounded alike, but I'm Marvy. Uh-huh. Bob, Bob, listen. Hey, listen, Bob. I, Barbara told me the raw deal you gave him when we were over on the other side. And it was rough stuff. You How did we throw, kill you? I you don't did, even you remember. You didn't throw me off a cliff for nothing. I'm too tough for that. You cut me in half. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, it didn't register. It wasn't even that big. It wasn't even in my top ten kills. Well, let's let's see if I can make a mock in that book on my, in my... What? I, fuck, hey, fuck you. <laughs> Travis, you're fighting Paul Blart Mall Cop <laughs> right now. Um, did I do any specific damage to the glass panel? Uh, yeah, you, uh, you left a big crack it in it. Uh, you didn't, yeah. you didn't get all the way into it, um, and there doesn't seem to be any kind of, like, s- soul juice leaking out of it, um, but, but you did crack it. Great. Uh, n- next in the order is, um, Marvy, uh, who says, uh, you know what, let's, uh, let's actually see if we can't start, get, right, let's see if we can't, let me get my pin out and dip it in the old inkwell and start writing down <laughs> something in my book. Hey! I'm doing my best out of here. Um, he uh, rears back uh, one of his giant fists. This fist is like the size of your torso. Uh, his his frame, like I said, is like heavily armored, uh, very tank like. Uh, he's got these two sort of uh, 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 small uh, bent legs that is uh, not really holding up his frame as much as his like two arms with these two giant fists at the end of him is. Uh, and he doesn't seem to have any kind of like discernible head. Uh, his fuse is just kind of right in the middle of his of his body, uh, and it is now cracked. Uh, but anyway, he rears back one of these gigant ginormo fists. I got and uh, tries to. We're not sucking that, were you? Uh, he hits you for uh, roll. He rolls a twenty-four. That does hit. Okay. Uh, Uh, he hits you for 18 points of damage, uh, right. and he sends you flying backwards. Make a dexterity saving throw for me. That's a critical miss. So okay. far, not great, new dice. Uh, you you land on your back, and you, you slide away. Um, so you are, you are prone. Gotcha. Uh, next in the order is Merle. All right. This is the new Merle. This is the new competent. Oh boy, I'm very excited for this new well-read, Merle. Well read, confident Merle. I will be throwing spells around like a dog shaking off puddle is water. Is this your is this your press conference? Uh, this hello, is the everybody. new Ladies and gentlemen, this is the new Merle High Church. Uh he casts dispel magic on his friend Taco uh to try to get rid of this confusion okay. that he has. And with the spell magic, you choose one creature. He is a creature, so he chooses him. I doubt that's how he prefers to be referred to, is as a creature. No, unless unless that was his nickname in college. It's him. It's Taco. Any spell of third level or lower on the target ends. So, period. That's been, that's been cast. Um, I, I really am. I want to tell you something, Dad. I am so... You're, li- you're liking this? I like it. I'm so proud of you. You're learning how to play the game of Dungeons & Dragons, which is good, because we've been doing it for a little over a year and a half now. Yes, sir. Um, confusion is a fourth-level enchantment. <laughs> well, I'm casting this in my sixth-level slot. You don't... You definitely, definitely don't have that. For sure. Definitely. Then I'm, well, I'm casting it as a fourth-level slot, okay. because... For each spell of fourth level or higher on the target, make an ability check using your spell casting ability. Ha ha ha! What is wrong with you? What is it? He's, I'm so, he's so overjoyed that he the almost DC knows what he's talking about. On a successful check, the spell ends. So, consider the spell ended. Did you roll? Did you roll? Did you do any of the shit? 
I'm getting ready to do. Yeah, that I was am, it. That was a dead misunderstanding. That was him being I'm braggadocious. Preparing like, to do it ended. the shit. Okay, yeah, here comes the shit, everybody. What am I rolling? Exactly. Uh, a d twenty. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Justin. <Right. laughs> a d twenty, and it's. It's a three. It's a three on that one. And then I add my spell modifier, which I believe is a five. Six. So it's a nine. You did not. So, you didn't end shit. You didn't dispel shit from shit. The, the, I, how about a little? Could I take the edge off of it? Maybe Maybe he's a little less not. confused. Maybe. No, maybe. He's, uh, no, he's still very, he's still like really super duper duper confused. Um, if anything, I also, he's more confused because he just saw you waggle your fingers at him a bunch and nothing happened. And literally nothing happened. Um, Highly I, confusing. Hello! We do need to resolve the fact that, uh, Taco, when you were confused, uh, the spell you were channeling to summon Geralt uh, ended and he vanished underneath Magnus, which would have been hilarious if we had thought of it at the time. But Okay. Oh, wait, give him an exit line. Let Geralt at least have an exit line. Sure. Uh, hold on. Let me come up with something. Yeah. Okay, got it. Everybody ready? Mm-hmm. Yep. Peace. All right. <laughs> Good. I like it. Simple, straight to the point. Uh, better luck next time, Merle. Yeah, right. Next in the order. Hey, I'm uh, sorry that Griffin was so mean to you, Dad. I was proud of you. No, you I was proud of you, too. I wanted that, I wanted that to, to go. Yeah, I really that's wanted that to work out for you. We need to reward our initiative, but that's okay. Uh, next in the order is Carrie. Uh, Carrie uh, reaches into her pocket and uh, pulls out uh, what looks like a little white pebble that she throws upwards into the air, and it starts emitting this flashing light, and it kind of, like, hangs in the air, emitting this, like, strobe light, and your eyes are kind of, like, naturally drawn to it, uh, and so are your robotic uh, opponents, and uh, when when your eyes kind of uh, adjust as this thing stops blinking and these, these robots are still kind of looking up at it, you see... Carrie almost like hanging in midair with her arms outstretched with two daggers, uh, one one dagger in each hand, which she brings down in a cross chop on Marvy's back. Uh, And wow, very successfully uh, performs a sneak attack on Marvy for Jesus. For 28 points of damage. What? Uh, sh- she buries her two blades in his back. Um, Should have been a rogue. You see a shower of sparks shoot out of these two uh, wounds, giving him almost spark wings. Um, and she does a backflip off of his back and lands behind him. By the way, if I may say, good move adding characters who are proficient at combat to our group. That was just, hey, that was suck just- a nut. <laughs> I don't know if you remember one time I kicked somebody out of a train. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel good, does it, Grip Travis? No, but see, I'm actually good at this. <laughs> Next in the order is Taco. Uh, do I need to start off rolling a d10? Yes, you do. Eight. Oh. Wow. Uh, okay, with an eight, uh, you are going to use your action to make a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within its reach. If there's no creature within its reach, the creature does nothing this turn. Cool. Uh, so within your reach, let me think. Uh, Magnus just rushed up. I think it would only be Merle is the only thing that would be nearby you. Because um, yeah. Carrie just flipped behind the thing and, and Magnus ran up there. Um, so go ahead and make a melee attack on Merle. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. Uh, what we got there is... <laughs> <laughs> Why am I laughing? It's a 19, uh, plus four. James. Uh, that's a good... Yeah. Hey, that's a solid hit. So were you... No, were, it's... Uh, were you just bashing him with the Umbra Staff? Do you have, like, a dagger? What were you doing? I have a short sword. I was using my short sword. Oh, fuck, yeah. Although, I, Get, if I was confused, would I pull that out? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, okay. he's what not if he within... Just pulled out- Merle's not within five feet of me, is he? No, no, no. Okay. Sorry, Merle. No, that would be too nice. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll damage on that. Well, here's the good news. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 his misfortune ends here. Uh, that's going to be five plus two, so seven points of damage. Oh, yeah. N- melee, not not taco. Strong suit. Yeah. yeah. Um, Merle, I imagine you would be very uh, uh, confused and upset by this. No, I'm used to it. 
<laughs> you're saying, wait, you're I saying deserve ta- this. Taco just like freaking out in combat and attacking you it elicits no response except for eh, just sort of a begrudging sort of acceptance. Well, yeah, I knew he, he assumes was... that I'm. Uh, he assumes that it's my retribution for him not not successfully removing my confusion. Yeah, I knew he was confused. <laughs> that's it's quite the it's quite the heel turn there, Taco. Not yeah. my not my. Not, I mean, not... he, it is fair to say he did know I was confused somehow. So I mean, he would just chalk it up to confusion. That He's is not that is fair. Um, next in the order is Magic Brian, uh, who says, uh, "I've been working on my magic missile for a while. Would you like to see it?" Oh, you left off the word Merle at the end of that statement. Oh, no, I wouldn't attack you, Merle. I, we've got oh. no beef here. Thanks, buddy. Uh, who's ready to see my new and improved magic missile? I I actually am. I say from the ground. Uh, just kidding. I like that's magic. Some, that's some level one shit. Uh, <sighs> and he casts Fireball. Uh, a 20-foot radius sphere. So he's going to kind of point it at the ground in between... Uh, all three of you. So uh, all of you need to make a dexterity saving throw, and I'm going to say, Magnus, you're going to have disadvantage on this yeah, since you I are so. prone. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Griffin. Good DMing. Okay. Okay, well, that's another critical miss. Holy oh, shit. Man, stink dice. New dice. Can, can you, you are shitting the bed. Can you burn dice? You can, <laughs> Father. I'm about to switch over to the old greenie. Um, I rolled 11. Yeah, I got a uh, 22. Okay. Fucking Flip Wizard Magoo over there. Yeah. Uh, uh, ex- I actually rolled a 19, which I feel pretty good about. Expertly leaps into the air uh, and avoids a fireball that uh, consumes... Uh, oh, I need to roll for Carrie. All of our fears. Oh, well, Carrie was behind them, so no, Carrie wouldn't be... All of our doubts. Da- it consumes our doubts, and we're left <laughs> feeling braver and more confident. Everything's good now. Everything's gonna work out Five. okay. That's a lot of dice on Fireball. I know I've heard you roll them before, Justin, but that's a lot yeah. of dice on Fireball. Yeah, a lot of dice. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, 24 points of damage. Oh, Snapple. Makes my, uh, makes my short sword seem like a stiff breeze, doesn't it? Um, okay. Yeah, you are... 24, uh, you said? Yeah. On each one of us? Yeah. Not me. Well, I'm bloodied. Ooh. Uh, but just barely. So Magic Brian uh, literally, like, lifts up his cannon arm and, like, grabs his wrist and fucking cocks it and then fires this gigantic uh, uh, burst of flame at uh, the three of you. Taco, you uh, dodge out of the way. And Magic Brian seems very impressed by that. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Magnus, you particularly just catch this one real bad. You're lying on the on the ground like a... Griffin, like a, like a starter log. I have to know, did it singe my sideburns? Um, no, it didn't. However, oh, uh, uh, oh, this will be, be fun. Uh, Merle, your hand is a little bit on fire. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> that is fun. Well, remember, you got that wood hand? You got that wood hand. You got that wood hand, and that's just like, that makes sense to me. That feels yeah, right green in my wood DM doesn't burn. belly. In the, in green the, wood doesn't burn. It's sappy. Um, All right, fine. Uh, you can blow on it on your turn, uh, or okay, maybe Jenkins good. will blow on it because it's Jenkins' turn. Uh, Jenkins uh, looks at how bad off Marvy is and casts uh, Stone Skin. Let me tell you what Stone Skin does because I know you're wondering. It's like a so. Let me explain. In this game, clerics can cast buffs on the other members of their party to like make them more survivable um, and and keep them from from getting hurt and taking damage or making them you know more. It's like a really good thing that clerics can do. This is the first time you're learning this information. He's not reacting at all. Okay. He's acting like you're not even talking about clerics. Uh, the spell turns the flesh of a willing creature attention. you touch as hard as stone. Until the spell ends, the target has resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. So all physical attacks Marvy has resistance to. Uh, next in the order is Magnus. Um, where am I in relation to Magic Brian? Uh, so you got knocked backwards quite a ways. You're about maybe 20 feet away from the three robots. Okay. Um, so I'm going to stand up. Okay. And then I'm going to action surge. And I'm going to charge Magic Brian. Ooh, okay. So I'm right up on him. Okay, go for it. And then with my attack, I'm going to pry his arm off 
Oh, f- this old fucking chestnut. Well, I just got blasted by his Mega Man arm. Okay. And I want to I want to take his arm off. So, um, I'm not going to let you do that with an attack if you want as an action to try and pull his arm off, but for you to be able to, like, deal damage and... No, okay, that's fair. Yeah, we'll make it... This is my my standard action, then, instead yeah. of an attack, is I'm going to use my crowbar oh to my pry God. his arm off. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you... Uh, uh, it's going to be a pretty high check, but I'll give you advantage since you have the crowbar thing. Well, that's a 19... Plus, my strength is a 26. Uh, pop. Oh! <laughs> oh, no! I was just kidding. I can't feel anything, but uh, it is a bummer. I, and uh... then my second attack, Uh-oh. I'm going to hit him with his own fucking arm. Okay. Can you shoot him with his own fucking arm? Oh, can I, Griffin? Oh, uh, Please! Yeah. <laughs> Please! Yeah, you, uh... Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna say he just channeled fireball through that arm, and I don't think you're gonna be able to cast another fireball out of it, but there is definitely, like, this arm is still hot to the touch, um, and there seems to be, like, um, you know how, like, when people use, like, a flamethrower, and they use it, there's still that little spout of flame that comes out after they're done, done blasting yeah, it off? I'm I know gonna shove that just, into the glass in his chest. I just went to, oh, okay, that's very cool. I just went to WrestleMania, and The Rock had an entrance that lasted about 25 minutes, and it involved him <laughs> using a flamethrower to set his own name on fire. That's, that's how I know so much about fireball okay. physics. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that gout of flame into his chest. All right, you, uh, you aim it right into his fuse. That's another 19. Uh, that's good, because I think that was technically a spellcasting check. Um, <laughs> you cast... Hmm, what do you cast? What's fairy fire? That doesn't seem like a thing that you... Yeah, that's, that's like a beautiful uh, light made of f- fairy magic. Yeah, go ahead and roll uh, 3d10. Uh, we'll say this is a very powerful uh, use of the spell firebolt. Six, one, seven, ten, seventeen points of damage. Okay, yeah, you, uh, you, you put this thing right up against the the uh, fuse in the middle of Magic Brian's chest. You fucking cock it and uh, release all of the leftover fire magic uh, in his arm, uh, and you just blast the the uh, thing in the middle of his chest and. Uh, uh, it does a ton of damage to him, uh, and his, uh, that glass fuse kind of, uh, shatters, and the, the white sort of floating light that was inside of it pops out and is now floating in between the two other robots, and you hear him go, well, damn it. <laughs> I had such big plans, I was, I mean, that was very cool, you, bl- you blew me up with a, like, a robot gun, but it... I had such big plans for for the for the robot bodies that I had found. I I was going to return to my love and we were going to finish our wedding, but um apparently uh the best laid plans are mice and men and all that, yes? Yep. <laughs> I am just going to just one second, so I'm I can, do you mind if I uh do you do you mind this might get a little uncomfortable, but do you mind if I uh and then he uh this this white ball flies into the uh, same fuse that uh, Marvy is inside in the little wiry ball. And you hear Marvy go, No, wait. I thought Jenkins was in the wiry one. Oh, yes. Shit. Uh, you hear Jenkins say, uh, Oh, come on. Your foot's on my butt, and my butt <laughs> is on your ear. This is clumsy, and re- there's only enough room for one in here. We're just nuts to butts in here. This is, this is, un- <laughs> this is wholly unacceptable. Uh, I, are they doing kind of like that dance, like when in cartoons, like a squirrel goes into somebody's clothes, and then the squirrel that's what says, I want to picture. And then the squirrel says, "We're nuts to butts," and it's uh-huh. like a funny joke because squirrels and nuts and all that. <laughs> but no butts to nuts. I'm hungry. Uh, next in the order is uh, Marvy. Uh, do do I have to roll to save against your shit against your goading strike? No, you're just it. Just is that from now on. Forever? I mean, until the battle's over. That can't be right. Whatever. Uh, he's going to attack you anyway because you murdered him in real life. Uh, he is going to uh, charge at you and do like kind of a thunderclap 
uh, with your body in the middle of it. Oh, sorry. Until the end of your next turn. Okay. Well, that's still this turn, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. He rolled a 19 versus AC. Um, well, that's a tie. Tie goes to the runner. What What was the attack? What kind of attack was it? Uh, hurting. Uh, hurting gorilla slaps. Well, okay, but it's just like he's punching me. Uh, he's doing a, a thunderclap, but it'd be bludgeoning damage. Oh, uh, 15 no. points of damage. Okay. Shiklack! Uh, Merle, just so you know, I'm I'm not doing great. Uh, yeah, he, he hits you real, real hard. Uh, you, you feel a little bit woozy after that one. Uh, and, uh, next in the order is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. I'm gonna use my, uh, superiority dice to do parry. When hit, use superiority dice to reduce damage by D8 plus my dexterity. Okay. It's five plus two, so reduce it by seven. So you take, so eight, I don't take eight, eight points of damage. Uh, next in the order is Merle. I'm going to cast Prayer of Healing. Up to six creatures of my choice that I can see within range. Each regain hit points equal to 2d8 plus my spellcasting modifier. And since I'm using my last number four spell slot, if you're using a spell slot of third level or higher, the healing increases by 1d8 for each slot level above second. Okay. Excellent. So an extra 2d8 on top of the normal base amount. And the six. And the so six. So I'm rolling the d8. It is a six. So four times six nope. is 20. You got to roll all four. Justin, will you keep count? I will. Six. Nine. Uh, tw- Fifteen. Fifteen. Thank you. Seventeen. Okay. Seventeen plus six, which is my spellcasting modifier. That means 23, and that means each one of my compatriots and myself get 23 points of healing. I am I'm no sure longer they... bloodied. Yeah, I'm sure they appreciate that. Um, okay. Well, I was down to three. Holy so. shit. Uh, okay. Um, next in the order is uh, Carrie, uh, who does a little... Uh, hey, Merle, real quick, before she moves, you should move. Use your move act. Get away from Taco. He's confused as shit. Okay. I'm. I do that. Which are you moving <laughs> towards the robots or away from the robots? Come towards I'm me. Away from Taco, and I'm moving towards Magnus, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of hiding behind him a little bit and cowering. Okay, like, good. I, I have the whole protector thing that I never get to use. Yeah, I know. Um, boy, I love this teamwork and this strategy. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Carrie does a little gymnastic roll. Um, to end up right behind the now conjoined uh, Jenkins Brian bot. Um, and she is going to uh, grab a big fistful of those wires and just kind of drag a, a knife across them to, to give him a little give him a little rude haircut. That's my favorite Edgar Allan Poe story. <laughs> The rude haircut. Uh, that is a hit. Um, for those of you keeping score at home, Griffin's right now fighting himself. <laughs> That is and true. he's doing a great job. Uh, and he, she hits them for 15 points of damage. Uh, and you hear both uh, Magic Brian and Jenkins yell at the same time. Uh, oh! oh! And I'll maybe I'll edit that to make it so that they both happen at the same time. Or I can use my, like, I've been studying Malaysian throat singing. It's this cool new technique. All the kids are talking about it. I don't think it's Malaysian. They do it in Malaysia all the time. Coldplay learned it when they okay. were over there. Studying. Uh, next in the order is uh, Taco. Mm-hmm. Oh, on, I'm sorry, boy. Taco, 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 Taco. We should have yeah. resolved this Come last on. time. Uh, Do it, buddy. You got to roll a uh, wisdom saving throw. You can you can save uh, out of this if you okay. do, if you do good. That is a 16 plus. Yeah, you save. Okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Okay, first off, some apologies <laughs> are due to the stabbed parties I have so grievously wronged. I am sorry uh, about that, darling. There's that <laughs> sweet voice of me so much. You're on the list, bucko. <laughs> hey, bad news for you. You, I better, you better hope you have a lot of robots, my I, friend. I have a question for you, my dear new friend. <laughs> yes. I'm, really, friend, I'm ready really. to let bygones be bygones. Just answer this one question for me, sweet. Sweet. 
Sure. If that's French for please. Mm-hmm. Would you like the fish or the beef? At the wedding, you mean? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. I'm I'm a vegetarian, actually. So mm. do you have a third option? Or? I um no. Uh, well, we'll have some sides, uh, some hearty sides, and of course, sweet bread rolls. Um, but I'll send you a link to my registry later. I asked. I had a toaster on that registry, but I no longer think that that will be necessary. And you see a little toaster attachment pop out of that robot, and two pieces of bread pop out of them. <laughs> so the two robots that are left, how close are they to each other? Uh, they are very, very close. These these three were standing like shoulder to shoulder, like emotionally. Well, right now Jenkins and Magic Brian are like super uncomfortably close. Yeah, I reach into my bag, and um, I reach in my bag, and I pull out a single glass sphere. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm all right. I'm getting. Ooh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> I said. Uh, Inside is the memory of the Goblin King. Uh, you're not too far off. And I say, you know, you two uh, remind me of somebody. Who's Who's that? Yeah. You rem- You remind me of the babe. And then I <gasps> throw the glass sphere at them. It shatters, and they float into the air. Oh shit! <laughs> there is no longer gravity around them. They don't have gravity. Oh shit! Oh god! The the okay. This is especially effective on the gorilla robot because, like I said, like he was sort of all of his center of gravity was based up on his fists, and now that he does not no longer have that, he is like kicking and flailing like a little baby um, oh, throughout the air. I am scrunching for um, some punching. The, <laughs> uh, the circular wire bot. You see those wires sort of extend and expand and retract, trying to like find purchase on this uh, conveyor belt. Um, but it is it is not doing an especially great job of steadying itself. Cool. Okay. I'm not confused anymore. I pretty much figured it all out. Like life? Yeah, and I I scurry back behind <laughs> I run away and hide behind uh uh hide behind Merle behind Magnus. Okay. <laughs> you guys can I say something? You guys are adorable right now. Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your best friend, your dungeon master, your best friend, and your dungeon master. Thank you for listening to episode 37 of The Adventure Zone, uh, working through a bit of a lost voice situation, thanks to WrestleMania, but I'm on the mend, and thank you for your patience and your thoughts and your prayers in these trying times. Got a few personal messages to read out in this here commercial break. If you want to get a personal message on the show or a message for your small business, just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. You can find out all those hot deets right there. This one's for Captain Brotastic. I, well, no, let me stop. I apologize for saying hot deets. I felt bad as soon as I said it. Okay. Captain Brotastic, this message is for you. It's from Andrea Alice Ray Morgan, the Honey Swagger. And Zach, and that rogues gallery says to Captain Brotastic, Joe, congrats, you survived another year. You dinged. Let joy be unrestrained, and so on. Without your unpredictable, capricious, and invariably excellent RP, our games would be impoverished, and in general, our lives would be mired in insupportable dreariness and ennui. Boundless love from your DM and your fellow skid marks. And hello to Jason Isaacs. What's up, Jason? Hit me up. It's your boy, Griffin. How come you stood me up? At the Taco Bell yesterday, we were supposed to meet at Taco Bell for some reason? I don't know. That didn't. That wasn't going anywhere. Anyway, happy birthday, Joe. I think that's what that message was about. Here's another message. This one's for Ryan, the Supreme DM, and it's from Lydia Knife Fight, Oliver Depister, Gildersleeve III, Millhouse, DeWood, <laughs> Tucson Smith, and Dolomite Bat. Fuck, please let that be a D&D party. Or, no, fuck, let it be, like, a real-life, like, ska band or something. Um, or maybe a D&D ska band. Happy International GM's Day, Ryan. We hope your day is like rocks. Um, I think that was, like, a month ago, which wasn't ideal. Um, and I wouldn't blame you, dear listener, for forgetting, because my whole family did. Didn't get any presents in the mail. No special cards, but that's, you know... That's fine. The real gift I get is the time I get to spend with them 
on this podcast. Happy GM's Day, Ryan. And one last personal message. This one's for Bob, and it's from Chelsea, who says, Happy birthday, Bob. I can't wait until this summer when we get to move in together and be the amazing gay sibling duo we were always meant to be. Thanks for always being there for me, and I hope hearing a birthday message from the brothers who you were almost as cool... Oh, no, I read that. I read that wrong like an asshole. Uh, I hope hearing a birthday message from the brothers who are almost as cool as you is as awesome as I think it'll be. Love your sister. Chungle, chungle fever PS Nagalog. I can't, I literally cannot tell if this is a foreign language or a coded message or if it backwards it just said something racist or. I'll just assume it said something racist. I will say happy birthday to Bob, and I will apologize to America. That's not me. I don't own that. Uh, I want to say a huge, mega, gigantic thanks to everybody who donated to the show during the Maximum Fun Drive. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We're going to be doing more episodes of the Adventure Zone Nights, the bonus campaign that Travis did an episode of as a uh, donor-only bonus episode. Uh, we're, we're talking about how to best do that. Uh, we're going to release it to the donors. Uh, we're going to do a few, a few more of them before the next pledge drive. Um, so we're really excited to do that. I- I'm mainly excited because like, God, like all I can think about is playing Dungeons and Dragons. I want to play Dungeons and Dragons really bad, but I can't cause I got to do, I got to do this part of it. And thanks for everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the, the hash. And thanks to everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the hashtag the zone cast. That's the zone cast, the hashtag. If you do that, you might end up as a character on the show. Uh, a character like, well, shit, um, Jenkins and Marvy and, uh, Magic Brian, who's, I, I can't remember, uh, what Twitter names they're ha- named after, could end up as a character like Noel, who's named after Chloe Noel, Clobird on Twitter. Uh, we're gonna be starting a new arc probably in the next episode or two, and so you'll make sure you get those tweets in now. I'm always looking for names. I've already got a couple picked out for the next arc, so, uh, yeah, tweet about the show using the hashtag the zonecast and help us spread the word. We appreciate that part of it too. We appreciate you leaving reviews on iTunes and just telling a friend about the show. We don't pay any money to advertise it, so um you telling your friends who you think would be into listening to four people play Dungeons and Dragons, um that's that's the only way we have getting the word out, and we really, really appreciate it. Hey, if you're a donor to the Maximum Fun Network, or even if you're not, go listen to the other shows on the Maximum Fun Network. Just go to MaximumFun.org. Go tune into shows like uh, Getting Curious, like Throwing Shade, like Sawbones, Jordan Jesse Go, like Judge John Hodgman. If you like the stuff that we're doing here on this podcast, you can go to McElroyShows.com and find all the other shows that we do. Uh, we do My Brother, My Brother, and Me, and Sawbones, and Punker Buddies, and Can I Pet Your Dog, and Schmanners, and uh, tons and tons and tons of other podcasts, uh, all at McElroyShows.com. Uh, that's it for this commercial break. Thank you all so much for listening, and thank you once again for all of your support uh, during the Max Fun Drive. You all killed it. We smashed our stretch goal like completely out of the water, um, and the, the Adventure Zone crowd like came out in a major way for us, and we really appreciate that support because, again, this show wouldn't exist uh, with without the support of the Maximum Fun Network and, and the people who listen to it. So thanks once again. Uh, that's it for this commercial break. We'll get back to it. Next episode will be up on April 21st. So we will talk to you then. Bye. Uh, all right, next in the order is Magic Brian. All right, let me see if I can control your... Do you mind if I... Let me just take control of, like, Z's... Can you give me control of, like, Z's 14 wires? And you can have Z as a 28. You just give me Z's 14... And here Jink is like, yes, okay, God, yes. You can have... Let me... Uh, uh, let me rewire... Let me route you access to... Okay, let me open up the packets and the kernel... Okay, fine. You have you now have access to those 14 wires. Please use them wisely. Those were some of my favorite wires. He casts haste. The target speed is doubled. It gains a plus two bonus to AC. It has advantage on dexterity saving throws, and it gains an additional what action on each of its Can turns. you do that, Merle? No. no. Where have you been? No. The components for this. I've been begging for extra AC. I don't have the components. The components for this, this is fun, is a, a, a shaving of licorice root. So I, ju- I just imagine you like... Pop in a little, little Cracker Barrel candy into there. And then you, the components have been in you And all then you along. cast the best buff ever. Um, 
Uh, when the spell ends, the target can't move or take actions until after its next turn as a wave of lethargy sweeps over it. Well, that's kind of a downer, right? But guess. it lasts for a minute, which is 10 rounds of combat. Uh, next in the order uh, is Magnus. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's Jenkins. Jenkins still has... That what? Jenkins still has control. Wait, hold on. Yeah. But it's one creature. Two minds, one body. One Poor heart, samples. two hearts, two souls, one body. One robot, two loves, one love. Ja! Jenkins says that time to bring out the big guns. Uh, and his 28 wires uh, all point at you, Magnus, and they spark up. And he casts Dominate yeah. Person as he Spark rolls up. up a fucking fat 420 blunt. Uh, he's trying to dominate your person. Let's go ahead and make that wisdom saving throw that you've been looking oh, forward to no. this whole time. That is a 20. Welcome back, Travis. <laughs> uh, you actually have advantage on that roll since you're actively in a fight with this thing, but you you cleared the save. Uh, yeah. Cool. That... Spoiler alert, uh, they added that caveat uh, because Dominate Person is bad, bad stuff. Uh, it's your turn now, Mag. Okay. Remind me, what's the, st- what's the stone skin? Stone skin is they have resistance to melee damage. Um, in addition to that, he also has haste. So he has plus two to AC, uh, pl- dec- advantage on deck saving throws, and an extra action on his turn. Great, great, great. Great, 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 great. I am... I'm going to grab those 28 wires, and I'm going to swing the Jenkins bot into the Marfi bot. Uh, okay. This is, um, you, you're just, like, going through, making sure you find the, the fucking Jenkins wires, and, like, you're, like, threading. Well, you said they were pointed at me. Yeah, all right. That's fair. Uh, they're pointed at you from this floating uh, uh, wiry body. Um, that's. I'm picturing, like, a fry kid. Is yeah, that the right? A, well, they're called fry guys, not fry kids. That would be crazy. Well, they have fry kids. Do you think they're just born fully formed fry guys? Well, how do they reproduce asexually? Do the men carry the children asked. like like seahorses? I don't know, Griffin. What do I need to roll? I roll the fifteen plus seven, twenty-two. Uh, this would be a throwing attack. Uh, and you're just what's the what's the, I, mean, I guess the point? What are you what are you trying to accomplish here? You're just trying to make these two big robots hit each other. Yeah. Okay. This is very Power Rangers. I'm very much into it. Uh, make a. Yeah. You. I want to smash them together. What did you? What? What did you roll? The attack was a 15 plus seven because that's my combat, my attack bonus. So 22. Okay, that ties with the buff with the big guy. So you'll do damage to both of them. Just roll a uh, 1d10 plus your modifier. I roll an eight. Let's say that my damage modifier is a plus four. Okay, you throw the the wiry bot that held Jenkins and Magic Brian into the big old gorilla bot that held held Marvy, um, and uh, as they collide, uh, the wire bot takes all that damage. Um, the Marvy bot does not because it has the stone skin. It takes half that damage. Um, and you see the, uh, fuse inside of the little wiry bot, uh, shatter and explode and two balls of light fly out of it, uh, and fly into the big gorilla bot. So now all th- you see these three fuses, you see these three lights inside of the fuses, the, the, the fuse in the big gorilla Marvy bot, and you can't really like distinguish between them anymore. It's just like glowing very, very, very brightly. And you hear just sort of the three of them fighting amongst themselves. Are, uh, are we in sort of a confined area? Yeah. Um, um I, okay. Why? Uh, I would argue, I would, wouldn't, um, the, gorilla bot take another hit colliding with the wall the jenkins bot robot is like pretty little it's about shoebox size so i don't think it would have enough force um it was it was the tiniest of the three robots so i don't think it would have enough force to like do that kind of like wrecking ball damage to him um but sort of the force of it hitting it did enough but not enough to like move it move it backwards um, so now, but the good news is, I get a second attack. Yeah, and now all, and I'm gonna punch the shit out of that gorilla bot. Okay, you're just gonna punch it. I'm gonna phantom fist the fuck out of it. What? Okay, that is a fourteen plus seven twenty one. Does that hit? It does not. No, it doesn't hit his his stone skin AC. Would you say I'd still push it though, because it is floating? Um, yeah, you push it a little bit, but not enough to like kill it. Well, bummer. All right. Um, Marvy is going to take a swipe at you, Magnus. Uh, he's floating. I duck. 
Okay. Wow, that was easy. Uh, no, he is going to have disadvantage because he doesn't. He can't like put his feet on the ground and like you know turn into it. Uh, that would be a hit. Uh, that probably isn't sixteen. Nope. Nope. All right. Yeah, you block his blow away with his shield. Uh, Repost. You if attack and miss attack plus the uh, superiority die. Okay. Um, that is a sixteen plus seven twenty three. Yes, that is a hit. Excellent. Um, and then it's just standard melee attack. So we'll say one-handed rail splitter. Uh, one plus six. That's seven plus the superiority dice three. So ten points of damage. Uh, okay, it does not do very much again because of his uh, because of his stone skin. Uh, but it is it is enough to uh, make Marvy Bot give up the ghost. Uh, quite literally, as the fuse in his chest explodes and the three ghosts come flying out of him. Um, and uh, Magic Brian says, Oh, good going, Marvy. You really uh, prove, proved yourself there, Arnold. Uh, good good, good going, strong man. Uh, and Marvy says, Hey, I did my best, okay? I, I, I'm a dead guy inside of a robot. I'm new. I'm learning my body. I'm going through robot puberty. I'm learning all kinds of stuff about myself. Are you there, God? It's me, Marvy. I don't know how my robot body works. Um, and Jenkins says, uh, boy, you guys are just absolutely hopeless. I can't, I'm going to go find another robot to get inside. Um, oh, yeah, they can do that. Um, and Carrie, Carrie shouts at you, Merle, uh, but like whispered. She's like, Merle, can't you like, can't you like do some cleric stuff? Can't you like channel the divinity or banish them or something? Hmm. Yes, Good I question. Can. I cast turn undead and destroy the undead. Uh, okay. Uh, they get to roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh, Marvy rolled a critical miss. Uh, and evaporates. <laughs> Uh, Jenkins rolled a seven and evaporates. And Magic Brian, holy shit. Magic Brian uh, also does not clear it. Uh, Jesus, the three of them uh, just kind of turn into beautiful particles. The white light what? just sort of starts to fade away. And Wait a minute. What? <laughs> you uh yeah, you You are successful. You shout you, you I, shout a uh, a command word uh from the divine extreme teen bible of Pan and that command word was Boogity boogity. All right. And Magic Brian says, "What what's what's you what does he say? What is a boogity?" Ah! And uh they start to uh disintegrate and uh Jenkins says, uh, "Looks like Team Rocket's blasting off again. <laughs> uh, Griffin, when you say they evaporate, do they go back to like heaven or hell or the afterplane or whatever? Or are they gone? Kind of seems like you just obliterated their soul. Kind of seems oh. like you just kind of erased them. Man, so, you know, at the end of the day, I punch people, but dad unmakes their existence. Yeah, Who's the right. real monster? <laughs> well, I guess Griffin, because he told dad to do it. That's fair. Griffin's a monster maker. Well, you've taught me a lesson. I've learned the lesson. He taught you to kill. No, to, to just, obliterate. To obliterate, yeah. Dad unmade an existence. So what's Three. Up, they, they got any gold? <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the loot? What's the fat loot? Do we need check, to roll need? Check the loot table. Uh, I roll need. See if their very existence left behind any gold. Um, Maybe some kind of like power from like unmaking a human. You uh, strip some copper wire out of the wiry robot, and you think you can sell that for some fucking meth money, baby. Um, you do have Magic Brian's blaster arm still, um, which uh, it seems dormant now, but you can still feel a bit of like magical energy still coursing through it. I hand it to Taco. I don't have any use for this magic shit. Uh, Thanks. I could use a spare arm. <laughs> you you earn that spare arm and you'll get it. Uh, I'm the guy that just obliterated three dudes. You're not you're not you're not Mr. Potato Head. You can't just swap your arms out interchangeably. <laughs> no, not until you reach level eight. He is level eight. <laughs> oh, and let's have a fucking arm party. I went to an arm party once. Trust me, you don't. You don't. <laughs> you want take to. your arm wait, off. Wait, you throw wait. it in a bowl <clears throat> and 
Some can we celebrate my victory? No. I feel like we did. <laughs> Why? Griffin, can you do the tell Daddy solved your whatever puzzle? Uh, yeah, you solved your um, you you solved my doing the thing that you learned to do at your class level two <laughs> puzzle. Yes! You solved my thing you've been able to do for literally over a year now. And I puzzle. did it by completely obliterating three of the most beloved NPCs we've ever had on the show. M yeah! Hey, maybe they'll come back. There's always a possible... No, they're done. No, they're gone. Let's move forward down the pipe where we were going on the conveyor belt. Okay, yeah. yeah you stop by these nerds. Um... Yeah, uh, uh, uh... Also, Carrie's been really quiet. Could Carrie say something like, Great job, guys. Hey guys like, she kind really of fun uh, fighting with you. My, my obliteration. Yeah, she's actually pretty blown away. She's like, Wow, Merle, I didn't know you had that in you. That was some savage yeah. shit. I didn't I mean, either. I did kill all three of them. Yeah, no, no you, you didn't. Magnus, you did a great I, job, too. I mean, I definitely... Lose, I destroyed the robot bodies. I definitely lose in the lid of that there pickle jar, but, um, let's, let's, let's... You know what? Let's just split the... We'll split it four ways. We all did. Oh, sorry, five five ways. Noel, sorry. Um, uh, Noel actually is being extremely quiet. Noel hasn't like said anything this whole time since the three uh, ghost robots showed up, um, and she's just kind of floating sullenly uh, away minute. from you down the down the tunnel with her flashlight on. And she's Psst, guys. Noel is a spirit in a robot body. Oh, man. She's got the fuse. She's got to be real bummed out about this news. Taco, go talk to her. Come on, guys. We got to we got to move on. We're almost we're almost there. Noel? Yeah. I recognize now that you are a spirit in a fuse in a robot body, but I want you to know that I appreciate you as a member of this team. You have I held us out a lot. Know, I don't I I don't know what you're talking I really don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Whenever you're ready. I mean, holistically speaking, you've gone from being a sentient AI to being a soul trapped in a machine. It's I I think it's a zero sum game, right? Yeah. You didn't have any illusions about your own agency, right? Is this like funny? Is this like you no, you, you like joke? Are you what? are you joking? I'm, about I'm not joke. I no, I'm not joking. I mean, I just don't. I mean, you thought you were a robot before, right? Um, oh no, she says. Um, <laughs> oh gosh, this is okay. <laughs> Somebody's really stepped in the old spectral doo doo now, eh? Um, <laughs> hmm. I, I did. I, um, I did. I died. She's like, I'm, I, oh my God, I'm, I'm, rem I'm remembering now. I, I, my name is Noel Redcheek. My family runs a, a cider press out, out in Hogsbottom. I was, I was riding our donkey into town and I was, I was making a delivery to some dive bar. The, it was the sleeping giant and it was, it was in town in, in Fandolin. And we heard oh, never heard of it. No. And we nope. we heard screams from outside and there was a there was this man he he came downstairs, he called himself called himself Blue Jeans. <gasps> and he was he was so kind, he told us to hide in the stock room and he 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 hit us and he fought off this dwarf that was on fire and he got him out of the bar and we thought we were safe. And then the the whole world got burned up. That sucks. Yeah. That is Woof. bad news. Woof. Woo. Hate to hear that, you know? Uh, too bad. I'm so well, sorry. But what matters now is that you're technically alive. Well, no, not technically. No, literally, technically. You're, you're in a techno body, so you are technically alive. Um, She actually starts laughing. Oh, good. She's, <laughs> 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 She's like, uh, I th I'm sorry, I just... Sorry, I just remembered I was, uh, I was in that back room, and my everything was getting burned up and i remember my last thought was that the whole world was getting destroyed and the fact that i'm here and you're all y'all are still here i i thought the world was ending i thought my whole family was gone but it, the world's still here right it's still here yep wow. yeah okay Fandolin, let's, not so let's much par let's parse the question was your family in Fandolin? no nah, they were out in hogsbottom Hell okay yeah yeah, yeah. They're, they're, oh, money. yeah. they're money do you guys know what happened to Fandolin? Mm, no. Uh, uh, nope. Mm, I heard you just said that it burned. It burned you. I think did you you said that right. That was you. Yeah. We are part 
of the people yeah. that tried to keep things like what happened in Fandolin from happening. Yeah. yeah. We have yeah. a pretty good success rate. If you count, if you don't count that one, which we can all agree was a world class boner. <laughs> now, if you want to keep what happened to you from happening to other people, it is imperative that you aid us down here uh, with in 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 completing our mission. Okay. And this, you're this saying, thing now, you're saying that this this thing that's turning this lab to crystal. Is trying to do to the world like what happened in Fandolin? You can save okay. the world, Noel. All right, then. Let's fuck him up. Hell yeah. <laughs> the fuse pops out of her chest, pops out of the bot, and it is seems to be floating in midair. Not like smoothly. It's almost like the spirit inside of it is like pushing up on it. Like, uh, like uh, imagine like a bird sort of like moving its bird cage just by flying really hard into the top of it. This is like an extreme amount of effort that this soul is using to push its uh, fuse upward into the air. Uh, and you see it move its way over into the pile of parts that you left on the floor that were the robots whose asses you just kicked. Um, and she floats into the big gorilla suit's body. Uh, oh, yeah. And you see that mech that you see that robot stand up uh, and pick up the wires uh, and sort of tie it around its back. Uh, and you see it pick up one of the arms left over from uh, 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 Magic Brian's robot and strap that onto itself and take some of the plating off that one uh, and take and, some of the and, plating and, off the old Noel bot. Uh, and sort and of, I, I throw the Buster arm and say, "Take, let's go to see, fuck up town." You see a fucking <laughs> port open uh, on this this robot side that the but it catches that Buster arm in midair, uh, and these four robots combine fucking Voltron style with Noel in the middle of it, uh, and she says, uh, "Hero time," and cocks her gun arm. <laughs> MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. We're Dave and Graham, and we host Stop Podcasting Yourself. We started this podcast back in 2008, before podcasts had to have any kind of concept, so we don't really know how to describe it. It's kind of like going to the barber shop if your barber knew all about the first season of the show Elf. It's like a 90-minute massage where the masseuse is two people talking to each other with a third person. It's like the Monsters of Metal tour, only quieter, no music, and just talking. It's like a makeout session, but without the lips touching, they just talk a lot. Download Stop Podcasting Yourself from iTunes or MaximumFun.org. Hey, Graham. Yeah. 